Good morning, everybody. Today is day 134. It's June 18th, 2023, and it is 1020 a.m. All right, so let's get started today. Now, when I turned on the treadmill, it made its normal noise, and it made a different chime. So I have no clue what this thing is about to do. Okay, so everything looks normal, and I already looked underneath my book, but let's see what happens. I don't know why it made that chime. Okay, so I'm already at speed one. Speed 1.6, speed 1.9, okay, let's elevate this up, and you guys, today I'm excited because this is the, or should be, the 21st use of this treadmill, so if I'm counting correctly, in nine days, I will have used this treadmill for 30 uses. And you guys know, oh, one more, that I'm concerned with the fact that I am just barely getting up to a true incline of 15. I don't think that the incline of 15 on one treadmill could be so much different than another. Okay, so I'm assuming I was supposed to be up this high all the time. So part of my challenge, of course, was to at least to get to the initial 30 days, okay, of the challenge that inspired mine. So I'm at speed 2.0, and we'll leave it at 2.1. Okay, so I gotta be careful because I had to reload my pages on my notebook and so these are all new pages. So I'm starting from the beginning here. And I believe I am now, yes, I'm only on the third page of the refilled papers I've been inside. All right, so we're going to finish up yesterday's topic and then we're gonna go into our topic for today. All right, so yesterday's topic was Things that should, or should have, I should say, been kept in the market or on a menu. And I had one more thing on the list from yesterday that I didn't get to because I went just a little bit past the time. Okay, so the last thing on yesterday's list was Olive Garden's Angry Alfredo Sauce. And my question is, which I am going to ask next time we go to an Olive Garden, I don't know when, is, is the spicy Alfredo chicken the same? Okay, they have to have made the angry Alfredo sauce spicy somehow. So I'm hoping that they have put it into this dish as the sauce with the chicken. But I believe that this dish is only a limited time. So maybe by the time we go to Olive Garden, the spicy Alfredo chicken won't even be on the menu anymore. And then if I come up with another list, I'll have to put it on there. All right, so for today, I asked my husband, I said, is there anything you can think of? Any inventions that they have, or should they have before that they don't have now? Um, any food that was on any menu. And these are a couple things that he came up with. So he said, number one, the McDonald's McRib, which I think I've only had once. And you know what? When I can remember, it was good. So he said, you know, a lot of people like it and maybe they should just put it on their menu and keep it there. Okay, also, one of his favorite cereals was by um, General Mills. 
and it was called Count Chocula. And I guess they had like a really funny cereal commercial. So um, he said that he would like to see General Mills um, come back with Count Chocula cereal. And I don't even know if General Mills is still around because I don't think I've ever heard of them. Um, you know, Kicks, Kellogg's, Fruit Loops. I mean, it'd be kind of funny if someone said, oh, those are all made by General Mills, right? I wouldn't know, because I never heard of General Mills. Okay, another one. I think he said that he just wished that this was like sold across the whole U.S. So, I don't think that it's not sold anymore. I just don't think it's sold in every state. And that's Canfield's Swiss Cream Soda. He loves cream soda. And, you know, usually, after a while, if you're like us, you try to drink no soda or as little soda as possible, right? And so, he liked this soda specifically because, um, I think he said it was kind of healthy. I can't remember. But I do remember actually that he said Count Chocolate was like sugar, but it was good sugar. So maybe it was like cane sugar or something. Okay, but yes, he loves cream soda. Um, the next one was the four tours. And I said, what do you mean? There's still a lot of tours. He said, yes. But I believe they stopped building them, I think he said in 2012. And I was like, oh. I didn't know that. I mean, there's so many of them. They have like the new ones that look really nice. Kind of remind me of between a cross of um, a new Cadillac, kind of, and slightly of either a Charger or a Challenger, right? The new ones, of course. But I didn't know that they stopped making them. So I asked him, I said, which year? And he said, just in general. I said, oh, okay. Um, the next one is Blackberry. And I said, they don't make Blackberry phones anymore? And he said, no. I was like, oh. So I actually did not know that they didn't. And I don't know why I thought Motorola made Blackberry. Um, but no, he called it some other company. Um, I think it has three letters. And it's acronym, and I don't remember. Um, I should have wrote that down. But Blackberry is separate. So I guess if I've never owned one, I wouldn't have known. I remember before we moved out here for a gift for, I think his birthday. I don't think it was for Christmas. I ordered him a Blackberry passport. And um, never really paid attention to, I guess, those would be like the manufacturers, right? I just found it for an extremely good price and ordered it, but that was that was years ago. I would say if it hasn't been 10 years, it's been close. And it still works. Okay, so these, oh, let me skip one of mine to go to another one of his. He said El Caminos. Very popular car. He thinks that they should start making them again. And I guess keep them on the market. Now, the other two I added to this list was, this is gonna sound odd, but just go with me for a second on this. So, there is a smokehouse combo at Chili's, right? They have a two entree and a three entree. The one thing that they still have, but that does not come with your sides, and if you don't change your sides, you get corn, and fries. The other thing you got was pickles. And um, they have a very unique seasoning on them. They don't taste like regular pickles. Okay, they are still a little bit sour, but if you never had them, you just have to have them to see what I mean, because I don't know how to explain the taste of them. But I think that the pickles should be put back as a part of what you get with the three entree or the two entree. Because now you have to ask for them. And then 
the next one, let's do a time check first. And we are at nine minutes, 35 seconds. Okay, 0.32 for distance. Michael Kors has a raincoat. Now, you're probably thinking, don't worry, they have a lot of raincoats. Yes, this one is special though. I love the simplicity of it, the sleek design of it, and you know how they say less is more? They added just the right amount of touches to this jacket, coat, whatever you call it. I don't know, I don't know if a jacket is lighter than a coat. I've never actually bothered to look that up. Like, what's the difference, if there is any? So, this one, has a center collar. And I liked it because, I don't know if people call it like the, um, what would be the word? Not profile, but maybe, yes, the profile of it. Um, it's just really like a sophisticated type look, right? Um, sleek, whatever you wanna call it, stylish. And um, it kinda has that I have arrived type thing with it. Even if you don't try to, um, I guess I can say, I don't know how to explain it, like, behave like that, because you know, they say if you're dressed nice, then usually you feel nice, and you know, you're kind of happy, but this is kind of like a serious coat, kind of, where you wouldn't walk in necessarily mad or anything, but it makes a statement. It's noticeable, plus it's Michael Kors. So it's gonna stand out anyway, right? So, Here's what I did. I have the uh, 2X of this jacket, and I had a large. But the problem was, was that I was starting to get to that point to where I'm like, well, I want to be able to wear um, a sweater or something underneath. And then when I zipped it up, I felt like it looked like I was um, just barely small enough to wear it, right? So even though it, it hangs nice, I was like, you know what? I need it in a bigger size. Not thinking once you put the numbers in front of the X's, remember they're bigger than if the X's don't have a number. So an XXL is smaller than a 2X or a 2XL. So I went ahead and worked a 2X it was too big. Shoulders, it was fine, but here it's too big. My husband said, well, you can layer up like you wanted to. Yes, but like I said, the one thing that I liked about the large was the fit. Now, we're probably thinking, well, what happened to your large? I gave it to a friend. Um, she's been about the same size, I would say, ever since I met her. And I thought, it's gonna go to waste. I didn't think that I was going to start to slim back down. I honestly didn't. And so I was to that point to where I started having to buy clothes in a bigger size, just period. Uh, jeans, everything, shirts. So I gave it to her. And I'm happy I gave it to her because she was super cute in it. But now I'm slimming back down and it already was a bit too big in the body part, the two X. And I feel like when I zip it up, like I'm wearing um, a potato sack or something like that. So it's bulky. And I don't like that because the large, I'm pretty sure the XL, and maybe even the XXL would have more of a curved in cut. And that's why I messed about the large. So um, the description of it actually is this, because I had to go to Poshmark to find it in the 2X that I have it in now. And I don't know, I'm probably at this point gonna keep something down, so I really hope they bring this specifically back, this specific raincoat. So what's the description of it? Because I meant to describe it first before I told you guys like, the backstory of it. Okay, so with the 2X, you can't tell but it has an asymmetrical zipper. That's right. The 2X is to the point to where the zipper looks like it's 
kind of straight, and I think it zips up at an angle. That's the thing I like about it. Um, it has two front pockets, the zip. The zippers are gold on all of it. And on its neck, on the center collar, it has a gold zipper that goes down the middle. And inside is a packable uh, raincoat hood. Now, it's not the same material as the jacket. So once I realized that there was a hood inside of there, I thought, okay, it's made out of the perfect material, but I kind of didn't like, or should say I don't like, how it doesn't look the same as the outer shell of the jacket. And so I know it has to be packable, but what's the word? I'm gonna go ahead and say it. I think it's a bit tacky. Um, it's all crinkled up, of course, because it's been packed inside the neck. And I'm not quite sure that they could have got a hood that would have been a good size to serve the purpose of what it was supposed to be for, which would be for rain. So I understand why they did it. It just doesn't look right. But usually, it's zipped up inside the neck. So that was the only thing I didn't like about it once I discovered that that hood was in there. But I mean, it is convenient. And I think it had a drawstring like most um, hoods for jackets. So yes, I'm hoping, oh wait, okay, the zipper part has a leather or like a pleather strip that goes all the way down the length of the side of the zipper where when you connect and zip up, that piece is over there. So just a small attention to details. The bike, of course, has overall for design. I like. It kind of reminded me, or should say reminds me of, a little bit of like a military jacket, kind of, because it has straps that go like across the shoulders, one on each side. And I want to say, I know the button is gold. Of course, it says my pores on there. You can't see it because it's, um, what would you call that, engraved? Not embossed, right? One of the two, engraved or embossed. I think they're both an indent and not the letters raising up, right? So yeah, but like I said, just those little attention to details and then the pulls on them are big and it's a double pull or double zipper, I guess if you will call it. So I have been keeping my eye out at Macy's online and at Burlington where I originally found the jacket. Whenever I go to Burlington, because like I said, we're in a very small town, we do not have um, either of those stores. And so I am on the lookout for a smaller size. I'm just hoping, even though I wouldn't want to pay full price, that they just bring it and circulate it back into the wardrobe for raincoats and that I can get one. And I probably would go maybe with an XL. I just miss the way it hung. I don't like the fact that the big one hangs straight. So yeah, um, I do have the wool version of it, but I bought it as I was getting bigger and bigger. And so shoulder wise, I'll always be fine. But I think it would be too big on me now. And I never wear it. Still has a tag on it. So I'm thinking maybe of, I don't know, like selling it on eBay or something. Okay, so we'll do a time check. And then I'm scanning over the list real quick. Make sure I didn't miss anything before I turn the page. And then like I said, we'll do a time check. And we'll go into the next part of my top and the page does not want to turn. Okay, so no, there's nothing else. This is notes for the next topic. Actually, oh no. Okay, oops, there's there's one more thing at the top of the list. It is the only thing on there. I actually, let's see, 19 minutes, 16 seconds. Okay, so what I did not write was the next topic for today. So this is a part 
of finishing up for yesterday. Okay, so the Samson Z Fold 4. On and off, I've been talking about Samson phones. Now, of course, we know September, October, maybe November, the Z Fold 5 is probably coming, right? And I believe, hopefully, the Flex S and the Flex G. And like I said before, the word flex was only in one of the names. But now, from what I've read from a couple of sites that have like leaks and stuff like that about technology and things like that, especially um, especially about cell phones, you can get that all out at the same time. But before, either the flex was either the S or the G, and the other one was just a standalone letter. But there's a possibility flex might be in front of both of the letters now. And they're both different in how they open. Okay, so I'm thinking sometime around the end of this year, beginning of next year, here they come. Well, um, yesterday, I believe it was earlier in the day, I was looking at this phone um, for a family member. And it wasn't specifically this phone, it just kind of got narrowed down to this, but there was other, what do you call it? Not guidelines. Mm, I would say, it's a word caveat. I can't think of the word right now, um, but exceptions to this rule, I guess you can say, because I can't think of the word to describe it, unless caveat was correct. So, First, I was like, well, look, they have 256 gigabyte memory, 512 gigabyte memory, one terabyte memory. Great. Oh, look, the unlocks is back. There's a mosquito in here. <laughs> um, but ha ha, I have weapon. Oh, he landed on my phone. Okay, well, at least it's over there and not over here. If it does, I'll see if I can take a swap or um, add it, whatever word I would use. I don't know, smack swap, swap, and swat, whatever you want to call it, because I have a feeling it's going to come. Oh, it's going to be, it's right there by my lens, you guys. You might be able to see it floating around. Oh. You know, I never really thought about that, that I was always worried that it, a mosquito or a bug would come over here. I never thought about what happens if it goes to my phone. It's going to look like on one of those home cameras where a bee flies up to it. And it's like, put like all in the face of the, you know, the lens. So hopefully it stays away from the lens part of the phone. And I will have towel ready to try and swat it. Okay, so anyway, um, yes, I thought, great. There's four colors. There's some type of green. Um, there is phantom black. There is beige, and then there's burgundy. And the burgundy for the, I think, 256 and the 512 are also a color that are exclusively offered by Samson. Okay, so I believe with other carriers, the burgundy is not an option. You'd have to go to samson.com. So that was fine. I thought, I know that my family member would want the phone in black, right? That's fine. So I click on one terabyte. Oh, well, look at that. Um, it's showing it in an unlocked option. Great. Oh, it's not showing it in the carrier. Okay, that's fine. I said, well, for the urgency of the need for the phone, I thought, well, you would think, because here are these exceptions to the rules. Number one, the one terabyte is exclusive to Samsung. So if you want a one terabyte Z Fold 4, you have to order it from them. The first and second problem I ran into was our zip. Um, and I tried other zips of other cities and states, and it was unavailable for delivery and pickup. And I was like, okay, I know it's exclusive to Samsung, but how exclusive do they want to get? Um, if a person wants to get this phone, how do they go about doing that? I called, oh my gosh, 
I was on hold for a long time. Finally got representative. She put me on hold for a long time. I think her system was like, uh, must have been running slow. And so she finally came back. Okay, I pulled the phone up. And I was like, wow, the Samson website is even slower for the representatives than it is for the customers, at least for me. Their site runs kind of slow. So it looked like there was a small chance of hope that she'd be able to order it. But she said, no, if it says that it's unavailable for pickup or for delivery to a zip code, then we're not able to order it and have it sent there either. Okay, so I'm thinking, why even list it if people don't have access to it? And I don't know, and I thought, well, maybe today, the thought I had was maybe they're out of stock, but it didn't say it was out of stock. So I don't know, maybe I'll double check again today and see, but I think for the Z Fold 4, the reason why it's on this list is because it needs to be more available. And I don't know. I don't know if they don't want to waste money in producing too many. Because like I said, the five is bound to come out this year, right? Um, if not next year. And if it's going to be next year, some people need that one terabyte. It would be different if they had a memory card slot for the four moving up. That would solve the problem, I would think. Not at all. I'm assuming that it's easier to just make a phone with internal memory without a memory card slot. But if that is the case, especially if it's more cost effective, I think Samson needs to make the one terabyte more available. And I don't know if I want to say accessible because you do see it online. It's just getting it is the problem. And so, I'm not quite sure why that is. I'm hoping maybe they just need to make some more for stock. So I don't know what happened with the whole cell phone situation. I just know I tried everything possible because I happen to know that if I were in that line of work, I would need a one terabyte. And I don't know if they have two terabyte phones, but they have to be coming. I'm assuming possibly. Um, if not one terabyte, it's really good. So yes, it was just like one thing after the other. Every time I seemed to have solved the problem, another one popped up. And sometimes your carrier will tell you, oh, we can get that. But I got to thinking, in this case, if it doesn't go to our zip code, then the sort can't get it either. I would assume, I could be wrong. So I don't have an update to know what happens with that. But yes, it is on the list because if you're gonna offer it, it needs to be more available. And at this point we'll add accessible. Okay, time check, 27.56. All right, next topic. So yesterday, um, what I was doing on the computer so far is researching this phone and the availability, things like that, the color, price, things like that. Once I saw it, I was like, oh, it's listed again. While I was doing this, apparently, I was so just focused on my computer screen. And usually I tell people, if I'm reading, whether it's on my phone, my computer, I can't multitask anymore to listen to a person talking to me unless we're talking about what I'm looking at. So apparently, I must have drowned out certain parts of this conversation. So what happened? What did my husband do? Well, he's been talking about it for a while. One, um, he used to professionally drive. Two, it makes sense even though uh, gas prices are insane right now, right? especially for diesel. Um, still, I guess the miles you can get if you're not towing the trailer, right? Um, different names. I call it a diesel truck. I believe the correct term is a tractor trailer. I talked to you guys about that before. Um, usually, when I say diesel truck, people know what I'm talking about. Uh, big rig is another name, right? Well, 
It was supposed to be for travel. I don't know, maybe for work, but not commercial use. Okay, you just wanna make sure that that's noted. Uh, even though all he would have to do is, is to um, renew his commercial license, still, I guess if you remove like the fifth wheel on it or whatever it's called, then it's not considered commercial. And so you can drive the big break with your regular license. And I don't know if that's nationwide for all the states, but apparently, at least it's uh, legal here. So yes, that is what he did. He finally did it. Now, how did this come about? First, he was seeing an RV, and I told him, one, where would we park it? The other house that we were renting in this neighborhood didn't even have an RV garage. Two, I'm not taking care of that big of a vehicle. Three, as other people pointed out, what about the poop tray? Mm -hmm. You have to empty that. That's gross. Um, I think at campsites you can connect, but I don't know if you can connect to, I'm assuming we would have to go to the sewer, right? Um, just the overall maintenance of it, what happens to it when it sits out in the sun, the roof of it, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? So my, my answer was no, I don't want an RV. Plus, it's too big, I can't drive it. Then, I think, and I think that's where I use the term incorrectly. Okay, so the extra part that is connected to the big rig to where you can haul trailers and it would be considered commercial. I think I called that a fifth wheel and it's not fifth wheel because I was thinking of uh, this other thing is, um, I don't know how to explain it. I can't think of the name of it, but it's not an RV. It is, I don't know if it's called a fifth wheel. It's, it might be the trailer that can hook to the back of a truck because the difference would be the RV is all one, right? You drive the RV. And this other thing I think is called, I don't know, fifth wheel, whatever it's called, but it's more so of a big trailer, so to speak. You can have a single wide, I think, and like a, not double wide, wide, but one that expands out pretty far. Okay, so whatever that thing is called, because I don't remember. Um, I said no to that too, because I still haven't learned how to drive a truck, just a regular truck, like an F-150, whatever they can, or anything they can tow. Okay, so this other thing, you'd actually have to tow it, right? That's all no. Because now you really have to be skilled. Okay, you can be turning one way in order to, it's just like with the other's right, to get the other ones to turn another way. Um, same concept kind of when you drive a big rig. So I am not the expert driver on huge vehicles like that. So his thought process was this. Well, with the big rig, we won't have a trailer. Eventually, he wants to modify it to where um, our vehicle can go up on top of the back. And so, I guess I wouldn't necessarily have to worry about the fact that it would be towed literally behind. That creates more length, right? You have the length of the big brake, plus you would have the length of the trailer and whatever's on top of it. And making it modified to where the vehicle can be on top of the back of the big rig kind of takes away from that. But you have to take into other things, um, I said it backwards, other things into consideration. One, the overall weight capacity. What's the max weight? You have to think about the fact that the weight they can hold in the back is only a certain amount of pounds. And I would think that would possibly include the weight that's already there. Right, because even if you take off that back piece that will make it a commercial vehicle, you still have to have tires. You have front tires. There might be single or double. And then you'll still have a set of tires back where there's single or double. And the other part, the fifth thingy, I think there's another set of tires. I believe those are doubles as well. So even if the front wheels aren't doubles, the back set of wheels are. And if you remove one, you still have to deal with the set. I mean, you can't, you can't drive the vehicle around with just two wheels, right? 
So I would think that part and the thing that's in the middle. You guys, what are you talking? You're like, what are you talking about? Go look. Go look at a big rig without a trailer on it. And you'll see it. I would think that overall, all the components, all the parts that make up that back area will be a part of the weight capacity, and I could be wrong. Okay, so the weight that you're told might only be referring to what you would be telling it in this case, what would be literally on top. That's what Okay, so I had some technical difficulties, and remember that extra beep I told you guys about? I figured out what that was. Okay, so let's get the treadmill turned back on. And I only have four minutes left. Okay, so let's get this back up to speed. Okay, so that's at 1.8. We're gonna incline it up as usual. And Okay, so I just made it go all the way up to 15. It's still inclining. We might go a little bit over because I actually had to watch the last part of my video to see where to pick up at. Okay, that's at two. There's 2.1, all right. So we are back. And I will tell you guys that that extra beat that I heard before I started recording was the fact that when I turned on the treadmill, I guess my husband's phone connected to the treadmill. Now I have not connected my own phone to the treadmill, but he has. And so it was to let me know that the Bluetooth connection was paired and ready to go. Okay, so there is a part of my video that I had to um, erase to link to this one. Okay, so this is the rest of um, the video that you guys were just watching. All right, so I was talking about the big rig that my husband purchased. And um, basically what I was saying before, I had to make my minor adjustments and edit to link these two together in the videos, is that that's why I'm thinking that the weight of whatever is on the top of the back of the big rig, plus that whole back of the big rig, plus the fact that this will be an added piece, all of that weight has to be combined for the weight capacity for safety. And I'm also concerned with the fact that if it's a flat bed where a vehicle can be driven on top, I think there needs to be side rows. And the thing is, is how do you accommodate for that? What do you do? Are the side rails gonna stick out further than the sides of the truck? Okay, so there's a lot of things to take into consideration once you add a modification like that. And we actually found on YouTube a company that makes exactly what we were looking for. And the guy was saying that he could make the uh, flatbed part however long he wanted and modify it to your specifications. Okay, so I'm thinking, I mean, think about it. You make a turn, hopefully not, but when the chains breaks, and now vehicle on the back of the big rig slides to the side. And it unevenly distributes the weight of the big rig, and then if there's a vehicle on either side, whichever way it would slide to, that could create major problems, right? So, I mean, the idea is very possible. He showed a lot of different options and a lot of different sized vehicles being driven up onto the back of the big rig, onto the, I don't know if you want to call it, I, I don't know, I don't think it would be called like a tow, but basically the flatbed part. And so it'll work, 
I mean, it looks like this company has said enough of these modifications to know what they're doing. But there are some concerns. Okay, so we still don't even have big rigs, so I know, obviously that would be later. But um, the other part, let's see where we're at. We're already at four minutes and 20 seconds. Okay, so the other part of this, of the thought process I think that my husband has, or has been having, because this is what he's been saying to me when he's talked about getting the big break, besides the gas will save, because of how far you can drive it, because we're not towing the trailer. And even if we have a vehicle on top, it still won't be nothing in comparison to towing the trailer, especially in comparison to towing the trailer that has items in it, right? Um, that it would be easy for me to learn how to drive and that I would like it because you sit up high in a big rig and you can see everything. And he knows that visibility is important to me. Okay, so um, I might have anything else on the notes here. I'm gonna stop there and I'm gonna continue on the topic tomorrow. Okay, um, because yes, like I said, I had to make um, a minor edit. And so, even though this would have been funny, what you didn't hear is that because early on, before I even start the walk, because his phone connected to the treadmill, just now, whatever he was watching, it started playing through the speakers. And that's the part of the video that I cut off. Okay, so, um, nothing bad was said or anything like that, but there was some laughing, like whatever video he was watching, the person was laughing at something. And so this thing, well, to me, I thought started laughing, right? And I'm like, okay, why is the treadmill laughing? And then I got to thinking, hey, wait a second. I recognize that laugh. And then I thought, I'm in airplane mode and I've never loosened connected to the treadmill, right? And I was like, oh no. That's what it did when I turned it on. The extra chime, or a set of chimes, was the Bluetooth connection. So sure enough, I went into the house and I asked him, I said, hey, were you watching a video and of this person? And they were laughing at something, he was like, yes. And I was like, your phone has been connected to the treadmill the entire time. And so he had to turn off his Bluetooth and his Wi-Fi, now I'm sniffling, because I went back in the house. Body temperature change, here we go. And so, um, he says, well, okay, I'll turn it off. And I said, no, 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 no. Even though you turned it off, disconnect the treadmill from your phone. So yeah, that's what happened. But I thought, um, especially since, like I said, I recognized the laugh, and it was somebody that we know, I thought, they're not gonna wanna have their laugh on the video. So yes, I took it out. Um, but for a second, for a second, I will say this before I close this book, for a second, I thought this thing is tripping, and this is not funny, and it's doing too much. So, um, I'll go ahead and close it there, and yes, I am so sorry that we have extra time. Okay, so, let me read out the time, because literally, like I said, all I needed was four minutes, but now I'm literally at seven minutes and 52 seconds. 0.26 for distance. 2.86 for the calories. But remember, because I had to pick up where I left off. Okay. So we will take the 36 minutes. We will add the eight minutes. And, oh gosh, I'm too tired to do mental math right now, but that's very simple, right? Okay, so 36 and eight, 44, right? Um, let me think. Mmm, no. Am I right? Am I wrong? Oh my gosh, I am too tired to know you guys, but that's okay because I walked over 40 minutes with the two combined. And since I'm going to link these two together, you will see um, that I was well past the time. All right, so I'm going to get in here and now link these two together 
and then upload. I will see you guys tomorrow and we will finish up or I should say continue on with our topic of my husband bought a big rig yesterday. And um, I will say this, like I said, I was on a computer and I was looking at the phones for a relative, like I said, and just kind of like my own little research and to see if maybe the five popped up on the website and say, hey, wait, the five is out, you know, for the Z Fold. And so I totally missed where I asked him, did he purchase it? Because he showed me a picture of it and he said he told me, yes, he got it. You guys, like I said, if I'm reading something on my phone, my computer, um, if you're not working on whatever I'm working on, then make sure you wait to tell me because literally it would have to be something like big, like, hey, you know, um, this, I don't, whoa, I hope not, but just something really serious. I said, this actually is about to hit the house. Not that serious, but something, you know, like that, like, hey, the uh, stove caught on fire or whatever. It would have to be something like that to really catch my attention, to make me stop and pay attention completely to what you're saying. So yes, he told me that he did tell me, and I thought I was just finding out when he told uh, my dad. <laughs> so yes, that's how much attention I was actually paying. And I probably need to pay more attention because, um, yeah, I don't know. He thought it would be funny. And actually it was my husband's idea for me to talk about the big rig. And he thought it would be funny that once we get everything cleared out here so we can park it in here, that I would turn around and be like, uh, yeah, this happened. And um, I thought, but yes, but I would want the RV garage obviously to be uh, more presentable than what it is right now. Okay, so like I said, we got some stuff we just got to get rid of that we weren't able to sell. So yes, um, with that said, it, this sorry about this, but I know I'm kind of, I know I feel like I'm kind of off, but because that threw me off, like literally it made a noise, right? And then laughter came from it and it was super clear. So I know you're gonna say, well, you were supposed to, when you did the review, you were supposed to let us hear the speakers. I was, but I can say as so long as it wasn't music, if it hadn't been someone that I knew, then I probably just would have left it there and just went with it, but I didn't. So yes, this video is a little bit longer than what I expected and I'm kind of sidetracked. That's where I was trying to think of. I'm sidetracked because that happened because I went ahead and did my edit before I started this recording. So um, yes, more tomorrow on, like I said, he did get it and I totally, it just went right past me. I didn't even hear him when he said yes. And um, now we'll see what happens. But all right, I will talk to you guys tomorrow. Okay, have a great day. Bye.